All right, guys, got this Jaina deck to show you today. Uh, and you might have noticed over the last week, I've kind of done the top three decks. I showed you those decks, and then I show you some of those decks individually, like Hogger, Baron, and now I'm going to show you Jaina. Um, I'm doing that for a reason. Like, I am trying to grind the PvP ladder a little bit little bit this season. I am currently Mithril Calculatron, so I'm at 15k. Uh, there's a guy in my guild that's already at 20k, but uh, I'm at 15k. These guys have all kind of chilled out for this season. I think no, not many people enjoy Heroes Resolve, but uh, I'm going for it. I'm just going to sort of keep grinding, keep going up. I really want my epic core. Like, I'd ideally love to get my, my legendary core as well. That'd be fantastic. But yeah, we're, we're on a good start to PvP this season. Um, so, this Jaina deck, I'd love to have epic uh, deep breath. I keep, honestly, I must have spent 10,000 or more gold, and I've only found 21 stars for deep breath. Probably more than 20, uh, 10,000 gold. I need four more stars, and I can make it epic. And then I'll have a really nice spell to complement this deck with. Um, but ultimately, let's, let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about this deck. Let's talk about what it is. Um, this is a Jaina control deck. So it's very control heavy. We use deep breath for primary for its control purposes, like clearing out the map. And very rarely do we ever actually get to attack their base unless the opponent really messes up. The whole point of this Jaina deck is you were just responding to stuff on the map, clearing it cycling Jaina in Heroes Resolve to get her more and more powerful um, and just using the most of your, your your abilities and units to just deal damage and make sure the map is in control. Now, I have tried this deck with Blizzard. It just doesn't work. I run Blizzard in my Hogger deck instead of Deep Breath. I run Blizzard in my Baron deck instead of Deep Breath. But I'm not running Blizzard in my Jaina deck the main reason being is that to make Blizzard effective over Deep Breath, you kind of need to get onto their base with units. The whole point that makes Blizzard good is that it provides you an extended period of control around the base where you can hit a load of stuff and deal damage to the base. And you deal slightly more damage per cast than you would do with Deep Breath. However, it is far, far, uh, especially with Double Dragon, far less superior at map control than Deep Breath is. And Deep Breath is probably the best map control spell in the game. And this Jaina deck just not as good without Deep Breath. Now, there are other Jaina decks that you can play that include things like Chain Lightning and Blizzard that can be a bit more map control heavy without the use of Deep Breath. But Deep Breath is just it's one of the few decks where it feels like absolutely necessary to play this spell. Um, right, let's have a look at some of the other stuff that we're doing then. We're actually using, believe it or not, Pick Lock on Defias Bandits. Why am I using Pick Lock and not Deadly Poison, which is generally the go-to? Because the Gadget Zan is back in the map rotation pool now, there are quite a few levels where you could very easily get the extra gold from Pick Lock from Defias Bandits. Gadget Zan being one of them, the easiest to do so, but this could very easily happen on um, Hills, uh, not Hills, but Foothills, uh, Hinterlands very easily happen on hinterlands and if you're lucky it can happen on alterac valley so like there are maps now where having pick lock count makes sense it is obviously the riskier choice if you just want a safe choice go for poison we're going for extended range on griffin rider the reason i'm going griffin rider and not safe pilot is because again we don't need safe pilot with this deck we have deep breath safe pilot basically does exactly what deep breath is supposed to do if you're running blizzard then maybe you run safe pilot over uh, griffin rider but you're just going to make this deck a little bit more expensive but it would give you a greater element of map control we're running execute because we run the horde so if we kill uh something with our next horde unit costs one less well the only horde unit that we're running is execute so it's going to cost one less at all times uh, and this is just a great way of killing off big units enemy heroes like barons or hoggers uh, and also taking down those last few bits of base HP. I, I can't tell you the amount of games that I've won by just having Execute. By the way, I'm wearing my really bright yellow. I don't know why I'm wearing this. <laughs> I'm running Dark Iron Miner because the more that I run decks without Dark Iron Miner, the more I realize that I really need Dark Iron Miner. There is one deck that I don't run Dark Iron Miner in, and that's Baron, because you have a lot of map control and you can get really quick uh, position, positional advantage on the map with Baron. However, I do sometimes lose in the mirror matchup if the enemy Baron is running deep, uh, Dark Iron Miner. So running Dark Iron Miner because I feel like I need it. Um, that was actually originally Safe Pilot, but I realized that I was never using Safe Pilot because I had Deep Breath. Obviously talked about Deep Breath and we're running Quillbore because Quillbore just functions nicely um, as a distraction technique for uh, Jaina. It's one of the few unbound tanks that are going to allow Jaina to stay a bit safer. It's good versus Barons because Baron deals elemental damage. It's good versus other Jainas. It's good versus Thalnoses. It's only just really not that great versus Hogger. 
But we have other ways of dealing with Hogger, including just letting him walk to your base and stunning him, using Griffin Rider, Execute, etc. We're not running Polymorph because I feel like you need to combo Polymorph with Deep Breath or Safe Pilot to make a good Energator deck, and we're just not doing that. Right, I've talked for way too long. Let's let's actually go and look at some games. All right, guys, I'm going to do the first matchup, and I'm actually going to do what I did before. I'm going to speed things up to 130%. It just makes it a little bit easier to go through the game. Going up against another Jaina here. Similar levels. This Jaina actually running a slightly different Jaina deck to me. This guy's running the slower, heavier cost Jaina deck, which includes Harvest Golem and Safe Pilot. I am not running that version of the Jaina deck. I'm running a much, as you've seen on the video, a much lighter version of the Jaina deck. Now, in general, when you're playing Jaina, especially Jaina versus Jaina matchups where you both have deep breath. And if you don't have deep breath, obviously, like, it kind of similarly applies with however you're looking to control the map. But ultimately, the best thing that you can do is play your Jaina second so that you can then deep breath or use a spell on his Jaina or their Jaina. Um, that's usually the best way to play this game. You, you kind of want to make sure that your Jaina is lasting the longest time in the field because the longest that Jaina is on the field, the more um, sort of spells that you have at your disposal that are increased in level... That's especially true if you're playing like the heavy spell Jaina decks. In this version of my Jaina, it actually doesn't matter too much because we do want to cycle Jaina regardless because Jaina gains a level every time we play her. But if you weren't playing in Hero's Resolve, the longer that you can keep your Jaina on the map without having to spawn a new one, the better. Harvest Golem is annoying, but it is slow and it's cumbersome and it doesn't really do much. On the That's why I don't really like the Harvest Golem version of the deck. It doesn't really offer anything, in my opinion. So we're... We're going to take out his uh, mining. We don't really want him to mine. We're also going to get a really nice deep breath off here. He obviously deep breaths us right back, but it is a deep breath that I don't think, unless he cast it just before, I don't think that deep breath ended up having the empowered um, Jaina uh, level on it. Nonetheless, you know, he's still kind of getting a bit more damage on the base at the moment. He's doing a little bit more in terms of like he's got a safe pilot that's damaging the base a little bit but we do kind of get back now we end up taking some farm in our favor and we actually mess up here we were too slow to use a deep breath so we ended up using a lower power deep breath on his um base which killed the Jaina. don't get me wrong but it was a lower power deep breath overall we're actually going to use an execute here uh, the reason i use an execute in this situation is because i know that i'm going to win the trade with my um griffin rider and i just want to deal enough damage to his harvest golem with that execute to kind of make it less of a threat going forward. As we got here, he's coming down the, the lane with the Harvest Golem, but it is only obviously one hit away from dying, so, you know, we weren't too, uh, too bothered by that. However, we're still losing kind of the deep breath war at this point in time, so we need to step it up a little bit. And again, if you can use J Jaina with clear casting, clear, clear casting you are going to get the, uh, the decreased cost on the deep breath. Now, he's holding his Jaina, and I don't really have another good play because I want to get the reduced cost on the deep breath. And sometimes it is worth it in that situation. Like sometimes it's definitely worth it to just take the reduced cost on the deep breath. Um, because it obviously gives you a slight gold advantage versus your opponent in that particular instance. Right right here, he actually ended up missing the deep breath on my Jaina. I should have, I really should have waited in this instance um, because I could have got a really high value deep breath off, but unfortunately wasn't able to make that happen. Going to use the Defias Bandits. This is why I like them. They're pretty good versus Safe Pilot. So we use the Defias Bandits in this situation just to stop Safe Pilot. Unfortunately, we're struggling a little bit here because he deep breaths and he gets away with a huge farm, which is massive for him. Now, we're kind of even in terms of the levels, but I do also have that kind of like um, ace in the hole, which is essentially I have execute and he doesn't. So this guy does not have execute, which is actually really good for me because execute is a problem. Uh, for him because obviously like I'm going to be able to get way more base damage down and I get a very very strong deep breath that stops any kind of aggression and now I'm going to start cycling into execute we're kind of in squeaky bum mode and this is what we're going to do at this point in time right watch what I'm using when you are in cycle mode you just use the cheapest units you physically got if you don't think the enemy is going to get to your base in time just use the cheapest units that you've got I'm um, obviously using Jaina because it's going to reduce the cost of my next execute but he's just used deep breath and I now didn't just need to wait for one execute to finish off the game and um, that was really close uh, but you could see uh, my version of the deck just a little bit more flexible, especially when it comes to double elixir. We can cycle our spells much more effectively. If he was running execute, could have been a different story because he only used polymorph once and not to great effect. But alas, we managed to beat him. Good game. 
Right. Uh, I've already shown you guys. This is literally the game that we... One second. Scoundrel's messed up here. All right. This is versus a Hogger matchup. Now, when we have Jaina straight away, we play her right at the back. Oh, realize you can't see me because I haven't cropped. That's me playing mindless. Look, look, look at, look at him. He's like, oh, oh. That's, that's what I look like when I play PvP when I think that I'm not having to talk. Just staring at the screen mindlessly. Anyway, when you have a Jaina in your opening hand, play her just straight away uh, at the back. It, it gives you options, especially if you're running something like um, Deep Breath ready to go. So just play Jaina right at the back in this situation. Um, and yeah, not a bad start at all for me. We're going to use Execute potentially here. We uh, don't mind using Execute versus Hogadex if we, if we can, but we don't actually need to use it in this situation because we were able to get a really nice deep breath off that also hit the base. Not really sure why this guy is running Huntress in his Hogger deck, I will be honest, but he is obviously running Dark Iron Miner. I got a really good stun from his Dark Iron Miner there, onto his Dark Iron Miner there, which actually allows me to get away with going for the farm. And then he essentially walks all of his units into a deep breath, which works excellently for me. Now in this situation, we're gonna turn him at the last minute and we're going to try and use Execute just to make sure I get the kill on Execute because we're running the talent on Execute that if we get a kill with Execute, um, oh my God, I hate, this guy's Dark Eye Miner use is mental, but we do actually, that shows you why Dark Eye Miner is not always that good if you use it as a reactionary tool because it doesn't actually kill things super quickly. Now he used Polymorph there for no apparent reason. We've got another Jaina on the, on the deck right now. We're, we're in a really good spot at this point. Um, obviously he's got Hogger coming down. I don't mind using Deep Breath just to deal damage to Hogger because we're going to then execute him and then again get a cheaper execute next time round. Going to use uh, Dark Iron Miner here just because I know that I'm going to get away with it. He goes immediately into a Quill Ball, but because I've got Jaina on my side, it's not that big of a deal. Again, situation way too late on his Dark Iron Miner means he won't stop my, my uh, Quill Ball from getting, sorry, my Cobalt from getting at least one hit there. And once again, not that bothered by using Dark Deep Breath just to deal damage to the Hogger. Because this is one of the few matchups where cycling execute to deal with the hogger actually benefits you more in the long run. So again, three gold for this deep breath. This is why I like playing Jaina with clear casting. We're going to go for, well, actually, we were, we were going to go for the, um, we were going to go for the uh, safe pilot. We didn't. We actually ended up going and taking out the Griffin Rider and also taking out the, what's it called? The other thing, uh, Cobalt Miner. Which turns out, if you've got a three gold deep breath, kind of works out at a relatively even trade, obviously. So we're going to use this just to deal some damage. I was looking to potentially use it, but we don't use it straight away. Not really a good option to. This time around, we see the safe pilot spawn. Go for the deep breath here. We're going to turn the hogger around, and we do also have execute. Now, he does have exploding sheep, which is obviously very strong, but um, not too bad. We're going to use... I, I, I don't know why I did that. We could have just used the Jaina in this situation, but this is what this is what you'll find happens in these types of matchups versus Hogger. Versus Hogger, you are essentially going to find that you will eventually get outscaled. You know, no matter what you do, your executes are going to get less and less impactful. So you just have to keep trying to chipping away at the base. You have to deal as much damage to the base as possible so that you can essentially hold out by the time that Hogger gets to this point in the game. Because if, if this game had gone another 30 seconds, probably would have struggled versus the Hogger. But there we go. Right, we've got another Hogger level, and this is the level that I quite like having my Defias Bandits on because they essentially can be used to take out that um, chest, which basically guarantees us four extra gold because no one really goes for aggressive unbound plays on the chests in this scenario. Got a really good opportunity to use... Oh, wait a second, guys. I've just realized this is... this is this, Again, it's one of those situations like he's got level sevens and level eights, and his base is level eight. This one's not worth showing you. There was definitely some stuff that you could probably learn from this, but like the guy has just got some units that are like three levels below mine, and that's just not good. It's not not good. It's not good to show you. It's just you're not going to learn as much as you could do. So we're going to skip to a game where the levels are a bit more even. The the good thing is that this actually very rarely happens to me at the moment. I'm mostly playing level nines and level tens pretty much all the time, um, which makes games more even and more fun. All right, here we go. Got a game. Uh, this is the next one. I think this is, I think this is versus another Jaina. Uh, but I'm going to go very aggressively with my Dark Iron Miner here. Just want to make sure that I can essentially steal away as much gold as possible. We get at least one there, which is great. Um, and we're now going to go and try and go and protect our own Kobold. Now, he's used Blizzard straight away. Now, I'm going to show you again in a minute Blizzard. Um, he's got a level 8 Jaina, but that's okay. Like, a lot of his units are quite relatively close in levels. He's a level 9 um, base versus a level... 
uh, a level 10 base, so it's not that much of a discrepancy. But what you're going to notice in a minute is that I don't always do this, but it's something that I have learned from this game in particular. When we're playing versus a Jaina that's running Blizzard, or to be honest, any Blizzards in general, you're going to want to try and position your Jaina away from your base. You do not want to give your opponent the opportunity to, to basically get Blizzard with your like right here that's a terrible Jaina that's a really really bad Jaina from me because I played it too close to my base it meant it was too easy for him to get a Jaina um Blizzard and also hit my base at the same time luckily I'm kind of trading blow for blow in terms of uh Jaina's but right there you see I put the Jaina far enough away so that he can't Blizzard it and my base or he has to be super quick to do so whereas with deep breath I've got way more time to react which is why I said that Jaina with Blizzard is it just doesn't feel as viable because you don't have as much map control coming out of it. Now he's playing a very heavy map control version. This is what I was saying when um, I was saying there's, there are other versions that you can play. I think I just got Blizzarded again. Again, I'm still not learning from my own mistakes, by the way. But I'm just going to use a naked deep breath in this situation because we both go for the quill bore exactly the same time to claim the chest, which is really funny. But he um, actually ends up, gosh, invested a lot in that. He used the um. He used the Chain Lightning and also used the uh, Execute to knock my Quillbore away just for the two gold. Again, in this situation, it can not, a, not, a good, not a good position for me. And I'm actually losing this matchup right now because of it. Having a pretty terrible time. Um, and it's my own fault because I'm just not learning from my own mistakes. But we can come back in this. It's not the end of the world. We're actually going to use Dark Eye Miner in much more of an aggressive way here. We just want to keep our Quillbore alive for the time being. I'm actually going to start playing Jaina away from my main base now. I don't need to play Jaina down the middle. So if I play Jaina away from my main base, it means that he's not going to be able to capture Jaina in the same uh, Blizzard over and over again, which is what was causing me so much problems with my own base damage. He's also noticing that that's happening now. Uh, he's obviously now having to Blizzard away from the base, but that's great for me. I don't mind him Blizzarding away from the base, because if he Blizzards away from the base, it means I'm going to get more value out of Deep Breath in general. Um, I'm going to use Dark Eye Miner. This is something that I didn't actually use a lot of, but I sort of generally tended to focus on just using Quillbore for this particular um, uh, sort of, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? I used Quillbore just for that particular task, which was just basically kiting away from the Jaina. Um, but that's okay, because I can use Dark Eye Miner for that to sort of proc the stealth and the stun from our uh, device bandits. We just need to cycle to a execute and we get it, but that was really close, and partly due to my own mistakes. Um, I'm going to try and go back and show you um, what I mean. So, okay, right. Whereas I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to get a bit where it shows you the deploy location around the base because then I can talk about it. Because right here you can see, let's actually, let's actually draw the blizzard circle on because then we can go and find a bit where we talk about the there it's there right let's just move this up a little bit to where it was right so let's say that's the blizzard circle um around the base that means that essentially there aren't many safe places to play a jaina The best place on this map to play a Jaina is probably here or here the, or maybe here or at the very back over here if you don't want to go. You kind of want to keep them walking along the very edge of the map because, well, even then that might be difficult. But you kind of want to keep them here or here is fine because they will immediately walk out of range after they've been deployed. And in my case, I kept playing them in here or here, which I was taking so much base damage for no apparent reason. But this is just a little lesson for you uh, you guys. If you don't want to send Jaina down the middle, sending Jaina up here is aggressive. It's an aggressive move, but it also keeps you well out of getting blizzarded on the base. Um, but just a little bit of a learning lesson for me, that game. Needed to pick that one up a bit quicker. So I then tried to play this deck with Blizzard. I'm going to keep this in here and show you why. The problem is, you know, Weavers is a very fast, this is a level 10, a very fast Baron deck, right? Jaina is a little bit slower. We are going to lose practically everything on the map. He's used Deep Breath, which is basically one-shot my Jaina anyway. Where am I using Blizzard, right? Like, I'm using Blizzard here, but it's not getting me any value other than just trying to trade versus the, um, the units that I'm already trying to trade versus, right? He's already got another Baron on the field. I'm, at this point, like, 
what am I doing? I'm, I'm so far behind on the map already because Baron is just so quick. One of the big things about Baron that makes him a problem is not only a skeleton mages, which, we, which we've all known for about 16,000 years, but it's the fact that he's a fast armored unit that deals a lot of damage. The fact that he's so fast means he can get on the map and get near your base quicker than practically any other mini in the game. And I, I just keep getting deep breathed on this map and there's nothing I can do about it. You see slowly over time, I, you can see there's no, there are like next to no blizzards getting casted, casted on his base because I just don't have the time to think or even look at his base because Baron is basically up in your grill the whole time. So pretty terrible like performance from me, but just want to show you that why blizzard just isn't as viable with this deck is because you're too slow and you don't have a way to contest the map without deep breath. Uh, you could play a much more spell-heavy version of this deck where you kind of run Chain Lightning and you kind of run Well Pegs maybe or you run Safe Pilot to be a bit more aggressive in terms of map control. But you just, with this version of the deck, you need Deep Breath. Okay, so now we're going to go and play that guy again. Instead of playing Blizzard, we put Deep Breath back in our deck and we're going to play him on a level that's, yeah, realistically quite good for Deep Breath. Um, so we're going to jump into this one, which I think is interesting because it's exactly the same guy. Level 10 Baron, practically level 10 everything. Going to go for a deep breath in this situation. Why did I go for a deep breath in this situation? Well, because it wasn't too bad to go for it. That's basically the reason why. The, the reason it wasn't too bad to go for deep breath in that situation is because it cleared out skeleton uh, mages, which are worth value, uh, worth gold. I actually missed the, the base there, which was really bad. Um, but it clears out the skeleton mages, which is great. Um, and essentially... Uh, you know, killed off a kobold as well. Now he's like, this is a super aggressive deck. But the thing is about the uh, thing is about um, this particular deck is you can kind of bait people in to a certain area. Like in this situation, I'm just going to keep going for. I missed. I missed the base again. All right, this is making me cringe inside. And now I'm wondering how I actually ended up winning this game because it doesn't feel like I should have won this game because what the hell was I doing? Bloody hell, I missed the base like four times. Right, here we go. I'm not going to miss the base this time. Boom, didn't miss the base this time. But this is what you're going to see me do quite a lot. If he doesn't go for my side tower, I'm just going to allow him to funnel his units down this side. And this is what you do want to do on this map. You want to hope that the enemy funnels their units down this side. If you're running deep breath, you let them funnel the units down this side because it's the more aggressive path to take. You group them up and then you deep breath them. You're just basically guaranteed to get way more value than your opponent in, that, in this situation. Now, he's obviously kind of realized that. Uh, I missed the Kobold in that situation. I could have been a little bit more patient and not missed the Kobold, but there we go. We're also going to pull him towards this side tower. Very easy to defend against the Baron on a, on a side tower because we have uh, stuns. We have um, plenty of other things like uh, the Defias Bandits. We have the Executes. We also have the, the damage that is elemental from the Dragon Tower. So lots of ways to defend against Baron in this case. And we're actually also now... Kind of getting to the point where we're killing Baron with our Jaina. Jaina is actually quite a good unit versus Baron. You just need to not be pinned in your base being killed by practically everything else on the map. But we're still behind at this point, and that's okay. And I actually take a load... I take a, way too much damage from this one Murloc Tide Hunter. Like, this single-handedly could have put me into the dirt, this game. Um, absolutely crazy. I just let that Murloc Tide Hunter wail on my base for so long. But what we are slowly doing is we're pushing more aggressively up the map. Again looking to take big value trades with deep breath which is what i'm doing here just again another massive deep breath that was probably the game changing deep breath in this situation and we've also cycled jane to the point where she's not getting one shot by the enemy deep breath anymore that is actually really important because not getting one shot by the enemy deep breath means that my jana is um much more comfortable uh kind of just walking up the map at her own free will he'll have to do more than just use a deep breath to deal with my jana at this point i'm now cycling multiple janas so we're going to be going into deep breath frenzy mode we're also going to be looking to use executes where we can uh, and obviously just trying to defend against baron we don't really want baron to hit the base whatsoever and in this situation now we are just going deep breath jana execute deep breath jana execute deep breath jana execute and you can see here he let my jana get a few hits on the base and we are now one execute away from winning which we turned around a game where we played awfully at the start, but just shows you that you can play awfully and still manage to turn around games. It's not the end of the world if you have a if you have a bad start. Um, and we played to our game plan, which was just basically cycle out Janas and defend against Barons. That was a much easier level to defend against Baron because essentially being fast on that level just means you get onto the opponent's Dragon Tower quicker. And if you have good defensive stuff like Defias Bandits, which can stun under the Dragon Tower at the right time, the Dragon Tower is going to do a lot of the work for you, which in that case it did for me. 
anyway hopefully you enjoyed this uh hopefully you enjoyed my yellow yellow coat i'm gonna go walk the dogs i'll see you later